Hello, and welcome back to today's American Flyer Trains for an update on the rebuild of 322, the 464 Hudson locomotive with smoke and tinder from approximately 1947. The first step in my process is to completely disassemble and strip. Not strip the paint, strip the components. Every component that can be removed is removed from both the boiler and the tender. And of course, it results from this particular locomotive in a four-piece boiler with the pilot, the steam chest, and the boiler front. Now, the only thing I didn't remove from this one are the carter pins. These things can be uh, a little bit tedious to remove and bend to get them straight on the interior so that you can pull them out. Had they been rusted, I would have pulled them out. I would have replaced them. They are not rusted. I'm going to use a black paint. The handrails and steam pipes are black. So I'm going to paint these black so it shouldn't be any problem to reinsert the handrail that runs down the side of the boiler. As far as the tender, every component was removed except this handrail right here, which is pinched, it looks like, between two components on the back. And I just did not want to try to pull that out because I'm a little afraid I can't get it back in. So I just left it there. It's going to be painted black. Otherwise, everything is off and ready for the next step. The next step is strip the paint and we'll look at both the materials used and the process. My choice of paint stripper is nothing more than simple green. Available in fine grocery stores everywhere. It is not difficult to find. No need to go to your hardware store or your big box home improvement store. You can find it in drug stores and grocery stores. I choose to use it full strength. It is basically a laundry detergent. It can be diluted. Dilution simply takes a little bit longer to strip the paint. I then use something like a plastic or rubber uh, kitchen sink or kitchen dish pan and submerge the piece, beginning with the boiler in this case, making sure it's covered completely in simple green uh, in a concentrated form. It has kind of a strong uh, detergent odor to it, so I usually put it in my second workshop uh, where I can just leave the ventilation open uh, and not have to bother me in my primary workshop and then submerge it. It took this one uh, about 28 or 30 hours. I let it be submerged. I think I flipped it one time uh, and then remove it, pick it up, use a nylon brush, two nylon brushes, one like you might clean golf shoes with, the other just a toothbrush, and use the simple green that's in the container, maybe a little bit of water on the brush, and scrub it really good. That gets all the paint out of the cracks and crevices. A lot may not be absolutely perfect, but it's going to be pretty darn close to removing this paint stripped down to the bare metal, particularly on the outside. The inside is a little harder to reach with a brush, of course, so it may still be a little bit black, but that's okay. No problem. Then I simply rinse thoroughly and usually use one of those nylon or both brushes in the rinsing process. And what you'll end up with is a piece of metal that is stripped down to the bare metal and squeaky clean. It gets everything off. Just make sure you rinse it thoroughly. This can be poured down your sink, your shop sink. No need to dispose of it anywhere else. Sometimes I repurpose it, simply pour it back in the bottle and soak another car in it. Of course, it didn't take the whole bottle to soak this. How I get rid of the product after it's been used is I put cheesecloth in my shop sink, make sure it's secure, and I simply pour the simple green that removed the paint down the drain, uh, the cheesecloth, cloth collects the flakes, the pigment, uh, the particles of paint. Then I can simply remove that, throw it away, and then rinse the sink out one more time. You wouldn't believe how good your shop sink is going to smell after you use this stuff. And it again strips this down very cleanly and you have a clean, uh, easy way to clean up by simply throwing away your cheesecloth that has the pigment in it. Use the same tools or methodology uh, and simple green on the tender. It always does a very good job of getting things like the coal bed extremely clean. It's separating paint all on the sides and down these cracks and crevices and the relief of the piece. A lot of relief on here. All the rivets, all the fine work on the front, 
and the rear, even the interior of the steps. And of course, that's been painted, so you can't really see how thoroughly it did the interior. Same process on the tender, and I've always been real pleased by getting the nylon brushes and going over the coal bed uh, to make sure the paint's out. These may not be just absolutely 100% perfect, but they're darn close. This one I think I soaked about 48 hours because these coal beds are always difficult uh, for some reason to get a lot of the paint flakes and pigment out, but I could get probably 98 to 99% of it out of this coal bed. And of course, when you break down the boiler, it is a four-piece boiler, and I soaked these. Uh, actually, I soaked them with a the boiler this time. I have done them separately, but I had plenty of room uh, in the dish pan to do that. So I soaked the pilot, the steam chest, and the boiler front. I think you have one other option uh, to use for the paint stripping. Keep in mind, Simple Green is plastic compatible. It's not going to hurt plastic. Citrus Strip is a good product. You can use it indoors. It doesn't have any fumes, but it is not plastic compatible. Don't use it on your plastic cars and don't pour it down your plastic sink like a shop sink in the PVC pipe. You have to wash this off the piece. First of all, brush it on. It's kind of like a gel. Well, it is a gel, stripping gel. I simply brush it on with a brush that I'm going to save uh, simply by washing it. I brush it on, but the removing it is a little bit more tedious. You can't do it in your sink. And the best thing to use to remove it is a paint stripper removal product. So in other words, you've got to go get another product. Now, I've used Simple Green to wash that off, but it's not something you can pour down your sink. Good thing is you can use it inside. Just don't use it on plastic. Before we move on, there is one plastic car behind this one. This is a New Haven 650 Heavyweight which was stripped with simple green, painted with this particular primer, which is my choice because it bonds to plastic. It's plastic compatible. There is a Rust-Oleum that I think you can find that's flat gray primer uh, that may even have the ultra cover coating ability, but it is not plastic compatible. So be careful. That stuff can wrinkle plastic in a heartbeat, as can citrus strips. So be careful. But this one was stripped with simple green, this same flat gray primer, and I mean, this was this plastic was nearly, I'd say, 99% clean of any old green paint pigment. As a matter of fact, these may have been written. No, they were green. Yeah, there was green paint pigment, primed and then painted with Doug Peck's Portland Hobbies heavyweight green American Flyer paint. Uh, it was also uh, coated in Tester's Dull Coat, and you can see how smooth this turned out. No bunching of the paint around these little relief points. So we've already pointed out that I'll use the Rust-Oleum Flat Gray Primer that is plastic compatible. Priming is such an important step because you're setting yourself up to be very successful with the finish coat because you're going to have something that the paint bonds to. It's going to have less chance of running assuming you're using very good spray paint techniques. Uh, and I think the coloration is even better and, of course, the protection of the metal. So here is the technique that I use that I have found successful, knowing that there's others, and I'm sure they've been very successful, but I just happen to use this one. I'll get a small piece of cardboard, about uh, 14 by 12 inches, to use as my palette, and it doesn't matter if it's the boiler or the tender, it's the same technique. Lay it on its side. I use consistent, smooth, not real fast, but not real slow spray paint strokes, back and forth. I maintain distance, usually 12 to 16 inches away from the object that I'm painting. I don't go back and try to redo it again. I'm usually very careful about how I aim so that I cover the first time. So this piece was done at eye level. The nozzle was at level because I put this in a paint box on top of a stool, outdoors, so that I can see what I'm doing in sunlight. I don't let the sun hit this directly. I use the box to protect it from wind, dust, if they're present, uh, and the sunlight directly hitting it. You don't need to heat this metal up with sunlight when you're painting before or after. So this one's been coated, smooth strokes back and forth. Then I come up, it's still flat. I tilt the can up a little bit and go ahead and get this side of the tender at that 45 degree angle. 
I don't touch the piece. I take the piece of cardboard and spin it around, and I do the same thing the back, same thing, same technique, so that I get all inside these ladder steps and everything. And you'll notice there's no bunched up paint. But my strokes over here, instead of side to side, are up and down because I want to make sure I get even coats around every single rivet. Spin it around again, same technique at 90 degrees, at 45, and then at 45 up here and back. And then I've still got the down and back to go on this side and down here as well. It gets every little crack and crevice filled using this technique. I have found, notice that the inside of the steps are complete provides a really, really smooth coat that's going to make painting with a finished coat more pleasurable. Look at the detail that was preserved on this after coating using that technique up and back, side to side, down and, down and back, how even everything is coated and there's no bunching up, no running. It even got the paint inside of these components right here that hold uh, the side linkages on. That's been my experience in the past. It just works terrific to provide a really, really clean, smooth surface that the paint will bond to and give you the best chance of some good results. I'm still going to clean off some of these brass tips right here on the motor mounts, as well as the brass feeding tube, stack tube for the smoke. I'll still do that. So that's the primer step and the primer coat. Of course, same techniques are used here. And one of the things, on say on the pilot, one of the things I didn't point out is once I finish a side like this and go all the way around 360 degrees, I set this aside on an interior room that has air control so that it's got air conditioning, which will help in the evaporation uh, of the paint and drying of the paint. And I let it dry minimum of 24 hours. Uh, I don't even pay any attention to what the can says. I'll, I'll do a minimum of 24. So I let it sit on the pallet like this. The next day or 24 hour, 24 plus hours later, I'll then flip it over. Same process on the boiler and do this side. Uh, again, all the stroking the same way is done. Four different angles on surfaces like this that has relief that can actually, I know these are small, but still they got four sides, actually five sides, technically, even though they're round, they kind of got four different directions you can paint them. And using this technique, keeping the right distance, keeping a smooth brush stroke with, with spray paint, allows you to fill all those cracks and crevices, but not overfill. Look at the relief around that access point right there for the water, the water fill, the water reservoir. Gets it in really good and sharp, and that's what I'm expecting the final coat to do. Now, on this trailing truck, because I don't want to take these wheels out, uh, these axles out. I mean, these are these are centered iron side frames. I have no ambition to stretch them out to get these out. I, I've already washed this thoroughly. If I do anything at all, depending on the paint match, I will hand paint uh, these uh, side frames, and that's it set those aside. I don't want to paint the wheels. don't even want to wash them in simple green. I just use some blue green dish soap to do that. Thanks again for watching Dave's American Flyer Trains. So long, everyone.